invites Jack Hanna's Into the Wild Bites holiday special. And now, please welcome 10 TV's Jerry Reddish, Kristen Hartman, Jeff Hogan, and Angela Ann. We are, and thank you all for joining us tonight for Jack Hanna's Into the Wildlife Holiday Special. I'm Jerry Revish, along with 10 TV's Kristen Hartman, Angela Ann, and Jeff Hogan. Hello, 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 hey. everyone. Thank you, Jerry. We have a great night planned for everyone tonight. Ahead of us with so much fun to share with you tonight. But wait a minute. We're missing one very important part yeah. of what is going on this evening, yeah. and it's not Santa. Let's bring out Columbus Zoo's very own Jungle Jack Hanna! Yeah! Thank, you. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. You know, this show has become hey, hey. a tradition to our 10 to the viewers. This is the eighth year for this great show. Thank you for joining us, Jack. Hey, Jack. Yep, these are the people who got me started right here, everybody. It's something else. <laughs> We're so glad to have you here with us, Jack. Isn't it great, guys? <laughs> and it has been a big year for both you and the Columbus Zoo, Jack. Yeah, it's been amazing with the polar bear, you know that. Now we have two, three new polar bears. Mm -hmm. And now Colo's gonna turn, as you know, 60 years old. Yeah. That's gonna be incredible. We had a record attendance almost this year. We probably will break that. Yeah. The water park, the zoo, all these things, thanks to all the citizens of not just Franklin County or City of Columbus, but the state of Ohio and United States worldwide. All these people are coming here. and It's just been a tremendous year for every, all of us. And we've got a big hour ahead planned for you. So let's take a look at what's coming up. Wild Lights at the Columbus Zoo and Aquarium is a holiday favorite in central Ohio. And it's sure to delight once again this season. Our program will showcase the stunning display of more than three million lights. And tonight, we'll get to experience it all through the eyes of a child. It's the most colorful. We'll also learn about worldwide conservation efforts sponsored by the Columbus Zoo and visit with Jack Hanna while on safari in Tanzania, Africa. Plus, we'll visit the wilds in Cumberland, Ohio to learn about the zoo's conservation work there. And the night wouldn't be complete without visits from all the animals that make the Columbus Zoo such a special place to visit. All that and more on tonight's Jack Hanna's Into the Wild Lights. All right, Jack, I think it's time for us to take a look at some of these animals you've got. What do we have here first? This is a penguin, everyone. A lot of you may or may not know this. There are 17 species of penguin in the world. People say, how many in cold weather? They say all of them. Only five out of 17. This is warm weather penguins. So right now, this is from South, South Africa. And Jack, they are, these are so soft. Yep, they are. Yeah. They have more feathers per scrunch than any bird in the world, the penguin does. The monogamous, they mate for life. And I don't know if you, you want, will you walk a little bit? They can't fly, right? Oh. No. <laughs> they are so much fun, everyone. The way they walk, walk down the high. When we go to motels, I'm on the road doing shows. We get him in line along with the snake and the cheetah. We walk in to check in. Yeah. You should see it. We get kicked out of the, we get kicked out of the place, but it's fun to do. And they can go to this animal cannot be out this cold weather. Not it can be out now, yes, but not if it's raining. In two days he wouldn't be here. The ones in the Arctic can go to 40, 60, 70 below zero. They have more blubber on them than this wow. animal does here. Amazing. All right, They're, we got another animal we want to bring out now. I believe it's called a binturong. Yes. Right? Oh my God. Whoa. <laughs> That's a big boy. This is everybody. Look at this closely. This animal here is called the bear cat or the binturong. Yeah. They call it a bear cat because I'm, I'm getting ready to ask you how many people have touched the bear. That's a stupid question. Obviously, nobody has. If you touch a bear, it feels like this. Uh -huh. Look at this. Look at the whiskers. Where this are these guys from? This is from, uh, from Asia. These animals are an incredible creature. Okay. This animal is nocturnal. Those things, those claws can rip anything apart. This animal can take down a king cobra, which one drop of venom can kill an elephant. That's how powerful the animal is. There's an animal here that smells just like popcorn. Here, wait a minute. Come here, man. Like yes. Really? It's amazing. It does. It's, I told you, I get so hungry when I could travel with him. Lovely. The Cincinnati Bear Thank Cats, you. right there. Hey. And the Columbus Buckeyes! The Columbus Buckeyes! <laughs> oh, wait! I am! And Angela is in the audience now with some kids. 
kids. Hey, Angela. Hi, guys. That's right. I am here sharing in the excitement with a few of my new friends, like 10-year-old Abby, who's from Columbus. What's your favorite animal here at the zoo? The penguins and the monkeys. Oh, don't we love the penguins and the monkeys? You know, it's so wonderful to experience the season here, especially when it's through the eyes of a child. And as adults, sometimes we forget what it's like to feel that excitement and seeing all the dazzling lights. Well, earlier tonight, I got to do that with my own daughter, Emmy, and a few of her friends. Check it out. All right, kids, are we ready to see the wild lights? Yeah! What does everybody want to see? Monkeys, owls, lights, kangaroos. Oh, how about some wild lights? Yeah! Let's do this. Look at the lights. Are we going to be able to see the reindeer? We might see some reindeer, maybe even Santa. Do you guys see the tree? Yeah. First stop, we made our way over for the lighting of the tree. Three, two, one. Wow. This 42-foot sparkling spruce is brand new and sure to impress. Look at that. Just amazing. It is a tandem bomb ready for the 21st century. Hey guys, Santa Land is back over there, but let's go see some more lights first. What do you say? Yeah. All right, let's go. More lights. More lights. This is so cool. Conservation Lake is one of the main attractions at Wildlife, with an animated light show happening every 15 minutes. Whoa. There's some in the lake. I like the middle tree. It's the most colorful. Wow. And if you're feeling more like Scrooge or the Grinch these days, it's the most wonderful time of the year. A visit here may be exactly what's needed. I love Christmas. Hey, guys, it wouldn't be a trip to the zoo without seeing some animals. How about we go check out the reindeer? Yeah. Let's go. Guys, it's a tunnel of light. Look at it. What color are these lights? Blue, 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 blue. That's a lot of blue. And the rain here. Look, look, look. Abby, over here. Look at the moon. Look at the moon. Wow. We got Chris here with his own set of wild lights. What do you think of the reindeer? It's cool. Well, not all the animals go in for the night when you check out the wild lights. We've got Santa's reindeer, of course, but there are plenty of other animals to check out here at the zoo, like the elephants, the rhinos, the manatees. There's the petting zoo and, of course, the aquarium. Yay! <laughs> hey, what do you guys want to see next? Me You know, it's so easy to get caught up in the hustle and bustle of this time of year. And that's why it's so great to be reminded of the awesomeness of this place, especially when you see the kids' faces light up like that. And we all get to be a kid again. So, who's ready to go see Santa? Me! Let's do it! Getting to be a kid again. Thank you, Angela, for the beautiful look at the, the wild lights. More than three million of them. Yeah. That's a lot of work. A lot of work. In 1978, yeah. maybe 4,000 people came here in the month of December. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now it's 200 something thousand. Yeah, and it's been an amazing thing we've done here with the Christmas. It really has. It means Christmas to me and our family, I can tell you oh, that. Of course. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. And we have more animals and more from Jack Hanna coming up. Plus, we have Tracy Townsend with us, and she is over in Central Town. How cool is this? Thomas the Tank Engine, Dinosaur SpongeBob, and coming up on Jack Hanna's Into the Wild Lights, what's new at the zoo in 2017? I'm going to show you the additions, the improvements. Boy, a lot of fun. It's coming up. Jack Hanna's Into the Wild Lights Holiday Special on 10TV is brought to you by Pepsi and by the Columbus Zoo and Aquarium. Jack, my name is Aaron. When you go on a safari, what are the things you always bring with you? I always bring on safari, and I'm not trying to be funny, something to control sometimes diarrhea. Because out there in the bushes, you tend to eat things that a lot of people might not eat, and I've gotten used to it now. So I still bring those pills, but also 
I'll bring a flashlight. I'll bring my little mosquito uh, things I have. I'll bring my wife a lot of times. I'll bring Sue because she knows more about it than I do. It is amazing what we learn about you, Jack, when we get together for these things. Oh, look at this right here. Oh, my. This is a okay. lemur, is that right? Right. This, this is a red rough lemur. It will come out here a second. And where does, where does the right. lemur live? It's from Madagascar. People think it's Africa. They're from Madagascar, a, a big island off the coast of East Africa, about 1,000 miles out there off of Kenya, Tanzania. This animal is what they call a presimian. What does that mean? This animal is on planet Earth before the monkeys and apes. Really? Before then. Can you imagine? Who knows? Well, I wouldn't have got that many numbers of years. The animal also has a little hands like yours. They, have a, they mark their territory by their armpits. How do they do that? Wait, what? They this mark their territory with their armpits. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. That's okay. unusual. OK. <laughs> <laughs> they don't take a shower. Anyway. Uh, the animal here, everyone, is just like silk. They were hunted for their coats and food. That's totally been stopped now. There were about 70 different types of lemur, species of lemur many years ago. Now they have 28. That doesn't mean it's all going extinct. They're not. Okay. They're doing very well today. Is it okay if I pet him? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. You see, you see oh, the, very how, soft. It's like silk, isn't it? Yeah, it really just is. Just like silk. The neat thing about the animal, everyone, I can show you here the tail. Ooh, I mean, wow. It, why is that an unbelievable? Because let me tell you something. Right now, everyone, if I didn't have the sense of touch or looking at this, you would not know that's in your hand. There's a bone in there. It's like, like that, lighter than a feather. It's, it's amazing. Very light. It's very Isn't light. it something? It's amazing. And her hands, his hands, yep. his? they've got a thumb and four digits. Yeah, there. Exactly. look at that. Exactly. Ooh. Okay. The, the <laughs> animal's been I've around heard. the planet okay. Earth for I don't know how many tens of thousands of years. So it's a neat animal, and it's not endangered in some spaces over there. So it's. It's really we got beautiful. something else coming out here now. I think the Siriyama. Oh, this is something else, everybody. Okay. On the David Letterman show, this animal was his said his favorite animal. This animal is prehistoric. It's called Siriyama from South America. It prehistoric this bird. Now, when he has to eat, he has to take a snake or a lizard and slam it on a rock before he eats it. Watch this. There's a lizard. Yeah. He finds a rock right over there. There we go. Oh, watch out, lizard. Okay. It's what he does. Boom. Oh. <laughs> there it is. I'm sorry, everybody. I have to laugh. <laughs> By the way, kid, it's a rubber lizard. It's rubber. <laughs> Don't get upset. Watch this. There Boom. he goes again. <laughs> they do this in the wild, everybody. It's amazing to watch. He has to find that. He's snakes, he does the same thing as snakes. And that's just uh, instinct? It's instinct. A full okay. body slam. <laughs> Boom. I can watch this all day. That is I can fabulous. watch this all day. One more time, please. Kevin. Kevin. Kevin? Kevin. Kevin. This is Kevin. Okay. Kevin. Oh, he sees it. Okay, Kevin. Kevin. Just for Jack, please. Go ahead. Okay, Kevin. Give a good one. Pow. All right. <laughs> that's it for Kevin. Let's hear it. <laughs> I love Kevin. Kevin. Is pretty awesome. It's beautiful. You know, there are a lot of fascinating and famous animals here at the Columbus Zoo, but none more celebrated than Colo the gorilla. Colo also has a big milestone coming up, and Jeff Hogan is out in the wild lights to tell us all about it. That's right, guys. We all know it is a big celebration year for one of the stars here at the Columbus Zoo. Colo the gorilla turns 60. You know, Colo has the unique distinction of being the first gorilla born in human care, and she is the oldest living gorilla. The breeding program at the Columbus Zoo and Aquarium is one of the best in the nation, and the birth of Colo was the beginning of a great tradition. We searched the 10TV archives and found footage of Colo when she was about a year old. Who couldn't love this playful primate? The footage was recorded in 1957, and it's just awesome that we get to celebrate another birthday with Colo. Colo has gone on to head a huge family of African Western lowland gorillas here at the zoo, and her family celebrates another gorilla baby birth with the oh-so-sweet and cuddly JJ. JJ was born in September to mother Tabibu and father Makambo, and is Colo's fourth great-grandchild. Congratulations to Colo for reaching the milestone and the amazing staff at the Columbus Zoo and Aquarium. You know, if you want to see Colo when you come out here to Wild Lights, you have to get here before 5 p.m. I mean, she's 60, she goes to bed early. And remember that huge celebration that's coming, December 22nd is the date for that. Mark it on your calendar because we are gonna celebrate big time. Colo turns 60, you can go to columbuszoo.org and get more information on that. And I know all of us here at 10TV are so happy and delighted and excited to celebrate that big milestone with her. Oh, that sure looks like it's going to be a great party. A lot of fun. Are we having fun out here, guys? Yeah.
Yeah, yeah. maybe, maybe. Oh, it, maybe. Maybe. Are we staying warm at least? Yes. 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 We are. So we have many more animals coming up with Jack in just a little bit, but also coming up a sneak peek behind a special holiday happening here at the zoo that will have all your senses tingling with a 4D experience. You don't want to miss that. We'll be right back. Hi, my name is Maggie. This year, Wild Lights continues a holiday tradition with the Gleis Skating Rink. This synthetic ice adventure is free to guests who bring their own skates. There's a fee for guests who want to rent skates, and that's a wildlife fact. I have to say, the wildlife look absolutely beautiful today. They started putting those up when? In September? They started putting the lights up September, October, and these guys worked so hard for three months getting them up. And I asked one of them today, I said, Hey, how are your lights look at home? They said, Jack, don't talk to us about lights for the next six years. <laughs> you know, putting up lights around here. Three million. Oh, look oh, at oh, this. We've got some guests. We just been upstage, some Jack. Yeah, this is something everyone that you'll see very seldom, which Brian has here for the zoo, a leopard, an African leopard. Look at my you. wife and I, my family just got through filming the leopards in, in Tanzania. They're a nocturnal animal. This animal gets to be about 150, 200 pounds at the most. They can take down a, a, an antelope or something that might weigh 300, 400 pounds. They can carry up a tree like a marshmallow. Amazing. It's amazing. And nocturnal, it's very difficult to see these animals in the wild. I think Brian knows the people here at the zoo that this is not something you see very often at zoological parks, an African wow. leopard. We've had clouded leopards, snow leopards here from different uh, continents in the world. Big they, paws too, huh? They call the leopard, by the way, the cat that hunts in silence. What I'm saying is you'll never hear the leopard until you're in his stomach. It's that oh. simple. <laughs> right. <laughs> and we've got some other guests here too, Jack. I believe I got oh, kind of cozy this. with this bush baby last year. This is the bush right on my baby. Head. Hi. Yeah, this, this, this is, is Jerry's a, friend. Yes. This is a bush baby. Woo! <laughs> 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 no, that's okay. Can you go to Jerry? Or? <laughs> Hop over there, somebody go else. Go ahead, go to Hop Jerry. somebody else. <laughs> oh, there we go. There we go. Thank you. Thank you, Bush Baby. The Bush we Baby. My the Bush friend. Baby, everybody. Oh. It's nocturnal. In the daytime, this animal will get with like 50 of them in a big ball. It's like a big ball of hair. Uh -huh. yeah. That means a protection in the daytime for them. Uh -huh. you know, look how vulnerable they are in the daytime. You can see the big eyeballs? Mm -hmm. yes. This animal it actually can jump 30 feet from tree to tree. It's amazing to watch them. Jack, how do they get their name, Bush Baby? Yeah. I guess they live in the bushes. Um, <laughs> that's like David Letterman. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> no. I, you know, they do live in the bushes, though. But they live in big bushes. Right. There you go. going to take him home. They're oh, not in uh, danger, though, right? They're, no. You're no, okay with that? No. Okay. But they're pollinators. They pollinate from seeds, from the fruit they eat. And the, uh, the, 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 everything they eat, they pollinate seeds all over the place. All right. Thanks, Jack. Jeff Hogan has been taking us into the wild lights all evening long. And he's standing by with even more fun. Another new attraction to wild lights this year is right over here in the Shores region of the zoo. You've heard of 3D movies, right? Well, how about 4D? That fourth dimension comes alive inside this theater with two holiday themed animated shorts. It's a multi-sensory experience with the characters coming right at you. Maybe even some wind or rain. It's a few extra bucks to get inside, but something you might want to check out with your family. All right, we have plenty more of Jack Hammett's Into the Wild Lights coming straight ahead. And you know what we have after the break? It is a crowd favorite every year. Those cute, cuddly, adorable zoo babies. Stick around for that. Hi, Jack. My name is Maggie. If you could bring a wild animal to Columbus, what city sites would you have the animal visit? Well, it's very simple. The first site got, the animal's got to visit. The animal's got to visit Columbus Zoo to check in, like a hotel or motel or whatever. He's got to go up there and figure out where he's going to live. Beautiful setting there. And then the first thing I do is take him over to the conservatory, uh, the beautiful flowers, and then the coastside. Uh, then I take him to, depending on what time, season, to one of the Buckeye games, whether it's football, basketball, baseball, whatever that be. And then the Blue Jackets play hockey. Tonight, aren't we, we really are, yeah. and our friend Tony brought out Boomer here. Jack, this is a baby kangaroo. Yep, red kangaroo. People don't know this. This kangaroo, when he gets full grown, can sit here, or if he gets alarmed, he'll sit up here. They go about, oh, I'd say 40 miles an hour, 30 feet at a time. And what do you call a big group of kangaroos? A herd of cattle, flock of geese? It's called a mob of kangaroos. A mob of kangaroos. Yeah, and they're okay. magnificent. When you see them over there in Australia, the beautiful plains, this animal's unbelievable. The baby is it's a marsupial, everybody. The baby develops in the mom's pouch. When they're born, they're the size of your fingernail. Your fingernail. There's no head, there's nothing. 
They come out of the birth canal and they crawl on the outside of the stomach for 30 minutes and go into the pouch where it lives four to six months. It's amazing. Oh, look, oh, look at look this. this. But you see the kangaroo, everyone, how he uses the tail for balance? Yes. That's what the kangaroo does. Now, you can't see this probably at home, but on the back foot there, everybody, on the back foot, there's a claw back there, on the front of that back foot. That claw is fatal. For example, if a dog or dingo were to chase him and corners the thing of the animal, he kicks out like this, and it's, it's over in one split second. That's the only main means of defense. By the way, we have a walkabout with a kangaroo at our zoo in the summer, spring. Go to Columbus Zoo, you can walk with them. That will never happen to you. He will not kick you unless they're in the wild and you try and you know, make them do something bad. Mm -hmm. They're a beautiful animal. Everyone. There you go. See there? Yeah. Oh, and when he gets upset, he can, that's not full grown, by the way. They can get up to here what, if they so want to. So full grown is about this yeah, height? Yeah, they are. Okay. Wow. And there's an animal that is an incredible marsupial. Australia, by the way, has over 200 marsupials. We have one. What is it? The marsupial. We have one. The possum. In the Tennessee, possum? we call it the opossum. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have this baby here. And you know babies are what make the holiday special. And we took a whirlwind tour of the zoo to meet many of the zoo's babies born in 2016. Oh, Take a look. The holidays are a time to think of the little ones, and it's no different for our animal friends at the Columbus Zoo and Aquarium. This year was full of new arrivals, and our zoo journey begins with baby polar bear births. These births are rare and a testament to the great work of zoo staff making a happy home for these cold weather creatures. Our next babies have us dreaming about warm weather climates. These are baby Caribbean flamingos. New babies are always exciting, especially with uh, flamingos. And they're always ready to go ahead and greet you in the morning. Uh, you can say hi to them and they say hi right back. Soon these beauties will be big enough to flock with the adult flamingos at the zoo. Over at my barn, the baby pigs are a hit with the little ones. These are Cooney Cooney pigs, a heritage breed from New Zealand. They are three months old and will grow to about 200 pounds as adults. Over in Asia Quest, our focus was on baby langurs. Langurs are from Southeast Asia, and the amazing thing is their unique color at birth. It's really exciting to have a baby. We haven't had babies here in a while for these langurs, so uh, it definitely was a sweet surprise um, coming in the one morning and seeing that um, our expected mother had her baby. Well, orange, you're too cute. Their orange color is believed to help mom find her little one in the natural habitat. Manatee Coast is our next destination. Millennium and Falcon are orphaned baby manatees rescued from the Florida Keys. They are here with two other baby manatees, Junebug and Jedi, and all of them are part of a program that helps these youngsters prepare to be reintroduced into the wild. Our next two cuties are also the best of buddies. Emmett, the baby cheetah, and his canine pal Cullen. Cullen has been paired with Emmett to help him adjust to life at the zoo, and they love playing with each other all day long. Zoo babies are the reason there is so much joy this holiday season. The fastest land mammal in the world is here the cheetah, come. which you're going to see here right here. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. And the cheetah has a buddy here. Can you explain yeah. why the cheetah has a, a, a well, puppy buddy? Susie Rapp is here with a buddy here, <laughs> Sean. <laughs> Sean's on the other Look, it's a young cheetah, everybody. The Columbus Zoo has one of the largest collections of cheetahs in the world. The cheetah was just declared the most endangered cat on the continent of Africa last year. That doesn't mean it's going to go extinct. It just means it has some concerns. It's getting much better now. Susie Rapp here has been at the zoo for almost 30... Well, a long time, <laughs> 30 plus years. She's noted from all over the world, everyone. I'm serious, all over the world, they call her when there's a cheetah problem. The cheetah is a solitary cat. The males at one time will get together. The cheetah also goes up to 70 miles per hour. When you're going home, not tonight, tomorrow if you're in your car, go down the interstate, go 65 miles an hour, and think of a cheetah passing you. That's the only way I can tell you. It's amazing. Yeah. But the explain this relationship that yeah. they have well, between the dog and the dog. The dog is brought here because the dog is the same exact age as a cat. Okay. Being solitary, this, these cheetahs sometimes on the first birth will consume their babies. So therefore, Susie is now the, one of the first people to, to understand to bring the baby puppy at the same time so they grow up with something. They're not sitting there all by themselves. Okay. And the cheetah, they respond to each other, right, Susie? And they're also an animal that, that they protect each other. They learn how to play with each other. So they socialize each other. Exactly. Yeah. This cat here, everyone, can spot a rabbit two, three miles away in the grass. It's amazing. <laughs> I think oh. he spots something now. This cat, by the way, real quickly, everyone, when it was born, when this cat was born, it had pneumonia, it had everything oh, in the world, everything. Wow. They, they thought there was no way it would survive. Susie Rapp said, I'm taking it home. It will survive. And by golly, today we have an endangered cat that is now alive today. Oh, wow. And these are servals, right? 
These are servos. Uh -huh. I've only seen a servo one time in 30 years of filming. I got to see my second one in the Serengeti Plains last week. <clears throat> the servo oh, yeah. is a very small cat. The neat thing about this cat, everybody, was full grown, by the way. You get to be, this is my daughter, wow. Julie, and all of our beautiful friends here. Hi. This cat here, everybody, can Ooh. leap up to 12 to 15 feet in the air like a rocket and grab a bird flying. The oh only my. cat in the world that can do it. The cat is a solitary cat. See the big ears on the cat? This cat also eats a lot of insects. 60% of its diet are insects. This is a carnivore. And so what you're seeing here is a very rare cat. The Egyptians, you see this on the, they're inside the pyramids. I mean, you, hopefully someday it'll be safe you can go there. It's beautiful. And this is full grown? No, 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 no. They get to be about, I would say, like this big. Okay. Maybe, what, 30 pounds when they're full grown? But it's called a servo cat. They're, we, I've only seen it twice. I got to see it last week. And all the times I've been over there. They come out late in the day, the camouflage in the grass, it's impossible to see them, by the way. But catching a bird in free flight, can you imagine that, jumping in the air 10 feet? No. And by the way, in the summer <laughs> when you come here, the Columbus Zoo, you will be able to see this animal jump 10 feet. They actually show you how it does it. Well, so it's a neat animal. Thank you, Jack. What is it we check in with Jeff? Because where is what, he? What, what happened to him? I don't know. I can tell you guys. Thank you, thank you. Yes, I am hiding. I am in a very special place at the zoo right here. I am in the very place where Santa hangs out right before he makes surprise appearances at the Columbus Zoo. Santa, yes, are you yes. ready? I'm ready. Ho, ho, ho. Let's, Let's do this. Do it. Come on. <laughs> Let's oh, say yeah. it. Yes. Oh. Hello. 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 Ho, ho, ho. What are you doing here, Santa? I came to see my good friend, Jack. <laughs> and if you didn't know this, Jack helps me take care of the reindeer in the off season. I do. Yep. Really? And Where do I you was buy the time, Jack? Oh. <laughs> and I was wondering, Jack, they what have you been feeding them? They seem to be getting rather heavy. Well, the thing is, Santa, they look at you and you've gotten kind of heavy. <laughs> I'm just being funny, Santa. I'm being funny, Santa. It's all the cook. All the you deserve it, though. Good list, bad list. <laughs> Naughty list. Naughty. Oh, oh, oh. Well, I was afraid, Jack, that you were going to tell me that you took them down to the Deary Queen. Oh. Oh. Deary Queen. Oh, 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 oh. oh that is so funny, Santa. They love a blizzard. Oh, 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 oh. Merry Christmas, Merry everyone. Thanks, Santa. We're not even close to being done yet. More of Jack Hanna's Into the Wild Lights from the Columbus Zoo is coming up. Welcome back to Jack Hanna's Into the Wild Lights holiday special. I'm Jeff Hogan here with Jerry Revish, of course, Jack Hanna right here with us, and Angela Ann as well. We're having such a great time here at the Columbus Zoo. Always something new up their sleeve. And this fall, they debuted a remodeled North America exhibit. It is so cool. And Teddy B. Scott Light took a visit and check out what's new. A favorite area for visitors of the Columbus Zoo is the North American exhibit. It was created many years ago, though, and it was due for some needed updating. Many of the improvements here in the North America exhibit were designed to do a couple of things. Improve your experience when you come to the zoo and also improve the quality of life for the animals here. A lot of the updates in our black bear habitat were for enrichment. So in the front, you'll see this canoe. It looks maybe a little out of place. There's a really large climbing structure and there black bears love to climb. For visitors, there are larger viewing windows and interactive exhibits. The improvements make these habitats a better place to live for the animals, but especially for a couple of very lucky cougars. Lewis and Clark were found by firemen who were battling a wildfire in Montana. You know, they come through to look for hot spots. They come through to dig and turn dirt over embers. And when they moved a log, Lewis and Clark came out. They were very small. At that time, they still have spots. Their eyes are blue. You know, their mom moves them and tucks them away while she goes out to hunt. Now, unfortunately, no sign of their mother was ever found. So we were really lucky that Jack happened to be out in Montana at the time and heard their story, and that's how they came to us. The staff at the zoo is passionate about the welfare of the animals and how that affects the guest experience. The health and well-being of, of the animals in our care is, is always our top concern. 
and building that connection with our guests it is right up there. They go on to, to care about animals everywhere. And that's a goal we should all share. All right, so there is a piece of North America, right? So why don't we get an animal, an exotic animal from North America? Not one of those roosters or something. It would be beautiful. Not a rooster right here. I got you a beautiful animal right here. Jay, we'll keep that on your side. Oh, thank you. Is that one of those Tennessee polecats? Is that what that is? It's a skunk. A skunk. Yes. I'm sorry. Who knew? You said a nice animal. North American animal, everybody. It's one kid. Tell your families, adults. You do not want your children, but the skunk can still carry rabies. You don't have to kill a skunk. I'm just saying they can be a carrier, like raccoons, foxes, these things. So yeah. in the springtime, when you see a baby skunk or a baby raccoon, just it's not going to hurt you. Leave it alone because I'll call the, the, the rescue centers or game of fish or whatever, and they'll tell you what to do. You know, Jack, you also travel the world for your show, Into the Wild. Where have you been lately? Uh, Tanzania, the, the Great Migration, oh. and it was incredible. You'll see these shows come in the springtime. It's absolutely the most spectacular thing I think I've ever witnessed. Well, let's not just talk about the work that you do in Africa. Let's take a look at that recent trip to Tanzania. Animal conservation is a primary goal for the Columbus Zoo and Aquarium, and there's no better ambassador for this mission than the zoo's director emeritus, Jack Hanna. On a recent safari in Tanzania for Jack Hanna's Into the Wild, Jack talked about the importance of spreading the word about conservation to the local Tanzanians. You cannot have conservation unless you have education. Tanzania does a great job of having all this, the animals, herbivores, carnivores, and people work together makes conservation. So you educate people that, and then you'll have conservation. Making the Tanzanians part of the conservation mission gives them a stake in the reward. Tanzania is noted, especially in the recent years, for the conservation practices. Their rangers are out there, the people when you enter the park, it's like going through TSA, so to speak, and they have every right to. And it, you know, I just saw the, 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 the things they've done, the new equipment they have, some of the new vehicles they have. That's another thing they have to have, a vehicle. So we're gonna get back and start helping them. These conservation efforts take Jack Hanna all over the world and provides the Columbus Zoo and the zoo supporters with direct impact on global animal conservation. We have 60 to 70 projects around the world we support. And we know that darn well, every single one of them because we, we go by and check a lot of these every other year, and some of them every year. The days are long when on safari, but their work confirms that the conservation programs are protecting these wild animals. A typical safari day in Tanzania is if you'd like to go, then you better be prepared to uh, get up about 3, 30, 4 o'clock in the morning, depending on you know, what you want to see. Animals come to life even before daylight. When you're on safari with Jack Hanna, you'll go back with big bags under your eyes, wondering what have I just been through. But you'll also go back with memories that'll last you a lifetime. So Jack, it's just fascinating the work you're doing around the world in conservation. That's a big part of what you do. Yeah, it really is. You know, we film the animals in the wild there. We have them here at the Columbus Zoo. And without the work and the research here, these animals have a lot more chances in the wild, I think, when we give them information we study from them. That's great. That's great. All right, Kristen is out in the audience somewhere in the crowd. Hey, Where? Jer. Oh. And you know what? I have a question I got to ask. Does anybody here know how to break dance? Do you know how to break dance? <laughs> she does. Oh my gosh. Are you mom? Yes. So do you think she'll sh share her skills? Not if everybody's around. <laughs> She's shy. She's just a little shy. Well, you know what? Maybe she can show us just a little bit because it's rumored that there's somebody in this room who might even be up on the stage who has some mad breakdancing skills. So <laughs> not that we're mentioning anybody. <laughs> we're calling you out, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> so we are going to get to that after the break. We're also going to Cumberland, Ohio for a visit at the wilds. You do not want to miss that. We'll be right back. Hi, my name is Joshua for some animated holiday fun. That's more than bearable. It's all by the Oak Ridge Bears Holiday Jamboree. It's a toe tapping, foot stomping, good time. And that's a wildlife fact. Extraordinary adventure awaits you when you travel with the Columbus Zoo and Aquarium. The zoo will be exploring the world in 2017. Pack your bag, come along, and create lasting memories as you visit the world's foremost wildlife destinations. These small group adventures will see the significant efforts the Columbus Zoo is making to save wildlife species around the world. Destinations coming in 2017 include Rwanda, Australia, Yellowstone National Park, and many more. For more information, contact the zoo at columbuszoo.org and book your adventure now. 
Hi Jack, my name is Mike. Some people look just like their dogs. What animal do you think you resemble most? Well, I've been looking for Bigfoot for almost 22 years now. What? And I don't know what he looks like, but uh -huh. you know, I'm not saying, he might be really uh -huh. ugly. I don't care what he looks like. Uh -huh. If I found Bigfoot, you know, you'll be the first to know, it'll be at the Columbus Zoo, but I just- Bigfoot? I just would like to, uh -huh. I'd like to look like him. I'm sure he's a nice person, uh -huh. or she, or I'm sorry, he or she, Bigfoot. <laughs> Bigfoot? Bigfoot? Yeah, Bigfoot, yeah. Yeah? Bigfoot. Do you guys see the resemblance? Bigfoot and Jack, maybe? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it's been quite a year here for the Columbus Zoo and Aquarium. And one thing that had everyone talking this summer was that commercial you were in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Do you remember I, that? It took, oh, yeah. it took years and years of practice. There's no stunt double, I know that. You know, no. not only did Jack talk about his love for cotton candy, but uh, we got to see a little bit of break dancing action from you. I know, it took quite a while to learn that. You got any moves? You guys want to see want some see, moves? See some moves? See some moves? Come on, Jack. <laughs> I can do the twist, like, you know, like when I was little, yeah. Uh, right now, though, we're going to get um, out to Tracy Townsend, though, who's with Tom Stuff. Maybe Tom can get uh, in breakdancing. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks guys, I'm here in Tinseltown at the Wild Lights and I'm joined by Tom Stolf, who is the president and CEO of the Columbus Zoo and Aquarium. And boy, did you have everybody rapping this summer. Oh, what a catchy tune. Wasn't that fantastic. <laughs> so the thing fun. I loved about it was all of our employees. So they were able to get involved and have some fun and no, Jack wasn't break dancing. That wasn't Oh wait, you wasn't. Uh, I hate to tell you that, but yeah. <laughs> but it was great, we loved it. Was it was fun, a lot of people love that. Tell us about some of the other highlights of the sure. past. Year. Our number one top priority is animal welfare. So this year we've been focusing on our new animal hospital and our nutrition center. You know, back when it was built uh, 20 years ago, we had about 3,000 animals. So now 11,000. So we have a, the top team for veterinarian care. Now they need more room. That construction started uh, this year. Okay. It'll end in June. So as we look at our expansion, mm -hmm. we're working on sea lions and seals, bringing them in. Uh, it's been a long, long time uh, ago when we had uh, sea lions. So that'll be right at the front of the, the uh, zoo. Okay. Uh, that design is happening right now. So a lot of things going on with the zoo. Tell us about attendance. Oh, we have had such a wonderful year, not only here at the zoo, a record-breaking year for uh, the water park, Zumbezi Bay, um, and the wilds had a fantastic year, and the golf course had an unbelievable year. So the weather was really good for yes. us. We had a lot of people coming and enjoying themselves. Mm -hmm. It really was one of the best years we've ever had. So you can take a little bit of a breath, but tell us what's ahead in 2017. We're also excited to, to announce we're bringing dinosaurs back. Yes. That'll happen uh -huh. next year, okay. so that'll be fun. Just a few weeks ago, you had a major announcement about the wilds. Yeah, it's our largest donation by an individual. Uh, a, a family in Zanesville, Ohio, contacted us about a year ago. And Mr. Bill Straker uh, was a, uh, is a World War II veteran. And uh, they decided that they wanted to focus on veterans that are struggling with PTSD, but they also wanted to help the wilds. Mm -hmm. So this combination is coming together and we're very excited about this partnership. So what we're going to have is seven cabins that are three bedroom cabins with a dining hall conference center and one week a month for six months, we'll be bringing veterans in with counselors from Mighty Oaks, and they're gonna work with these veterans, a win-win-win for everyone, and we have to thank the Straker family for that contribution. The Wilds is amazing. It's really fun in the summer. This is gonna be something that we'll be able to do year-round, and, and uh, it's, you know, again, it's never been done, and it's a great way to honor our veterans. All right, thank you, Tom. And if you haven't been out to see the Wilds, Tom's right, summertime, the time to go. Angela Ann had a chance to visit. Take a look at this. Hey, Tom. Hey, Angela, you ready for a wild side tour? Let's do it, it looks like fun. What makes the wild side tour so unique here at the wild? You know, you're getting up close, you're going off road, literally inches away from animals. So uh, tell me what we're doing right now because we are definitely going off-roading. So this is an opportunity to come out and see some of our friends. <gasps> we are welcomed by an ostrich. Oh, so, hi! <laughs> we have, <laughs> we have a, well, a, fem a female ostrich here. They're not the most intelligent animal in the world, but we don't want to tell her that. <laughs> um, yeah, I wouldn't know what that means. They're amazing. They're so fast. Hi! So as we come up to our giraffes, Look. this is uh, one of the most popular part of the uh, wild side tour. Oh, oh, ah! 
Oh gosh, I'm sorry. <laughs> now, you don't get this opportunity every day, no. right? No. Ooh, are those minos? Yeah, for me, this is the grand finale. Finale. Wild side. So, oh, wow. uh, how do you like a 5,500 pound animal running towards your, your vehicle? It's a little breathtaking, huh? That is like all body mass. Yeah, it's amazing. So it's funny because people come to the wilds and they think they're just coming to get on a wild side tour and see some you know, really amazing things. Yeah. But when you're here, I want you to know that there's many things going beyond just your tour. This is a place for conservation in action. Boy, that wild side tour, a lot of fun and a lot warmer than today. But I want to remind everyone that annual memberships to the wilds are great Christmas presents. Well, they come with some perks as yeah. well. Also, you get to help out what is a world-class conservation effort taking yeah. place right in our backyard here. What's so great is that it is a short trip from Columbus. Less than two hours will get you there. So make a trip, make a plan for your family next year. But right now, I think Jerry and Christian have a few surprises for us on the stage. Hey, guys. Hey, we do. You know, once again, the Columbus Zoo and the Columbus Dispatch have partnered in a contest to give away more than 500 prizes, totaling $30,000. And Jerry, tonight, we are helping to give away the five grand prizes, which include between $1,000 and $5,000 in cash and zoo passes and more. That's right. We received more than 1,300 entries, <laughs> and out of five finalists we have brought here tonight, they are Lori Connor of Powell, Rodney Howdy Shell of Lancaster, Jennifer Miller of Grove City, Robert Cease, also of Grove City, and Connie Chumak of Delaware. and everyone chose one of these animals that you see on the stage uh, with prizes attached. Each of you is holding your prize bag, and I think that it is time now to find out what kind of cash winner you are, so open up your prize bag. Everybody ready? ready? I think we should have a drum roll almost. Okay, on my go, count, clapping. we'll do it. Three, two, <laughs> one, open up your prize. Let's hey. take a look. Thousand dollar winner, thousand dollar winner, thousand dollar winner, thousand dollar winner, two thousand. Hey. Yay! And stay with us. When we come back, Jack has a few more animals. You are watching Jack Hanna's Into the Wildlife on 10 TV. Jack Hanna's Into the Wildlife Holiday Special on 10 TV is brought to you by Pepsi and by the Columbus Zoo and Aquarium. You don't know Jack! Hi Jack, my name is Adriana. If you were a coach of an animal basketball team, what five animals would be on your team? So, animal basketball team, okay, obviously you have a giraffe. You know, no one's gonna get above you. Obviously you'll have like a cheetah, fastest land animal in the entire world. Oh, I know what you do. You also have a snake on your team because I'll scare the other team right off the floor. Uh, oh, and then you want definitely, instead of a, a chimpanzee, you want like a big gorilla, which you can literally just pick the ball and just pop it and part of the game has to be called off. Uh, you can have a, um, a zebra on the floor too because that confuse people with their colorings. You know, you wouldn't understand the, if it's an animal team against an animal team, they get all confused. I think we have time for one more animal. Let's okay, take one a look. More animal. Whoa, what is okay, that? Okay, what is this? What is that? Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little frisky. No, this is a quadamundi, everybody. It's a South American okay. raccoon. It's like ours. The quadamundi, one of them got in my thing about, oh. I don't know, many years ago, and it got in my thing, got my underwear, my socks, and went out on top of the trees with everything I have. 
and nice long tail. Well, if you ever go I to noticed. South America and you're camping, make sure you zip out and lock everything up, or they'll have it in the trees. Trust me. Wow. The Quantum Monday. Oh, well, we're so happy that this guy could join us. And before we go, we have some folks to thank. We do. Big thanks, including Oakland Nurseries for these beautiful, fresh cut Christmas trees. Beautiful you can trees. smell them on the stage here. Oakland Nurseries has so many trees and wreaths and poinsettias and gifts at their four locations. Be sure to check them out. Yep. All these wonderful animals tonight that you brought out here, Jack, fantastic. There are so many great people that work here at the zoo. We can't thank them enough. And without their support, this would be impossible. Yep. So thank you. It's just great. Thank you, Channel 10 WBNS, which got me started in this business of TV. And I'll never forget the first one time and how you all supported us at the very beginning. Thank well, you. You put our town on the map. You put it in the world spotlight. Yeah. So we appreciate you. You and the zoo have been gracious hosts to us. Finally tonight, though, thanks to all of you here in the audience and yep. everyone at home for tuning in to 10 TV and helping us celebrate this joyous holiday season. And we can't leave before we give you guys all a huge reminder. The wild lights are lit through New Year's Day, yep. so come on out to the Columbus Zoo and Aquarium. It is beautiful. You've seen the video, but come and see it in real life. Right. And with that, we have one final message on behalf of our entire 10TV family. Everybody, Happy, Happy Holidays! Holidays!